Hey everybody, Dustin here at eTrailer.com. Today on your 2020 BMW X1, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Kurt Class 3 Trailer Hitch Receiver. Now our Class 3 Trailer Hitch Receiver offers a 2 inch by 2 inch receiver tube opening. It's going to be perfect for accessories like bike racks or cargo carriers or your ball mounts to get some towing done, whether you're taking a boat to the lake for the weekend or hauling some mulch around for the house. One thing I'd like to point out as well is you don't have to worry about your hands-free lift gate not working. Now regardless of what we're putting in our hitch, everything's going to secure through our 5 8 hitch pin hole right here. A pin does not come included, but you can pick one up here at eTrailer.com along with some locking and anti-rattle devices. On bottom here, we have hoop style safety chain loops and they are plenty big to get. Regular size safety chain loops on or even our large hooks right here have no problem fitting on our safety chain loops. Our hitch is going to have a 525 pound tongue weight. That's the amount of force going down here at the receiver tube. That's going to be ideal for a large cargo carrier fully loaded up or even a four bike platform rack fully loaded up with you and your family for the weekend. It's also going to have a 3,500 pound gross trailer weight rating. That's how much you can pull behind it. At those weight ratings, you're good for maybe a smaller boat, a jet ski trailer, or even bringing a pop-up camper with you on the weekend. Now I'll give you a couple measurements to help you out when selecting accessories for your BMW's hitch, whether that's a bike rack, a cargo carrier, or a hitch ball mount. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of the bumper, it's about five inches. And from the ground to the inside top edge of the receiver tube opening, it's going to be about 15 inches. Now that we've gone over some features, let's go ahead and get this installed together. It's a fairly simple install. You're just going to need a drill and some patience. To begin our install, the first thing we're going to need to do is lower our exhaust. Now you always want to support your exhaust before you try and lower it. So I, I like to use a strap. We can hook our strap to either side of the vehicle and then pull it tight. That's just going to prevent our exhaust from coming down any further than we want it to when we go to loosen it up. To further lowering down our exhaust, we're going to need to remove two rubber isolators. There's one on each side. I like to spray them down with some silicone first. Makes them a little easier to get off. Then we can come back with our pry bar and separate our exhaust hanger and our exhaust. Get in there with your pry bar. Just work it off gently. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. There's a third isolator here towards the front of the vehicle. We'll go ahead and take that off as well now. Hit it with your silicone. Take your pry bar. Just pop it off like the other ones. Next we're going to need to get our lower fascia out of the way. It's going to help us install our hitch. On either side, we're going to have a push pin fastener. You want to take your trim panel tool or a flat bladed screwdriver. We have trim panel tools so you can pick up here at eTrailer.com. You'll get it behind the pin and work it out. Once you got the center of that pin out, then you should be able to come behind it with the rest of your tool and get the rest of it out. Set this aside, we'll be reinstalling it later. Do the same thing on the other side. Next we'll need an 8 millimeter socket to remove the bolts that attach our lower fascia. And there's going to be four on each side. The instructions are going to tell you that there's 12. Um, you actually don't need to remove these ones right here because they attach uh, this panel to the fascia and that's coming off with it anyway and then there's another one right here that doesn't attach to the fascia at all so we won't be removing that one either so there's going to be four on each side for a total of eight. Now we can gently begin to unclip our lower fascia. We're going to be setting it aside for reinstallation. If you just follow along with your hand you'll feel it clip off. You don't want to force it along the way. It should just come naturally. We will be reinstalling this, so hang on to it, set it someplace safe. We can use our strap here 
to help us lower our exhaust down any. Keep it from going too far. Now we'll take an extra set of hands. We're going to hold our hitch up into place. We're going to be using it as a template to mark out and drill our holes. So we'll get our hitch into place. We'll let our extra uh, buddy help us out and hold it in place. Once we get our hitch into place, we'll want to make sure it's as far back against the frame well as we can get it. So if you wouldn't mind just sliding your side down over there. And once it's as far back as we can get it, we're going to take a paint marker. We're going to mark on the frame the holes in the hitch because that's what we'll be drilling out. Then we can remove our hitch. Just work it underneath your exhaust. Go up on your side and come back over here. And then we can slide it down. We'll set it aside for now until we get our holes drilled out. Next, we're going to come back and drill out the holes we marked. I'm going to be using a step bit, but if you don't have one at home, you can start your hole out with a 5 16 drill bit and you'll just want to then enlarge it to a 9 16 hole. We'll go ahead and get all of our holes enlarged. Maybe necessary uh, to get a straight drill with your bit to pull over on the exhaust a little bit while you're going up. Before I move on, I like to take one of my bolts and make sure it's going to fit in the hole that I just drilled out. Now that we know it's good, we can go ahead and move on and drill out the remaining four bolt holes. We've got all of our holes drilled out. Now remember, there's two on the passenger side. We have three over on the driver's side. Our forwardmost hole on each side, I went ahead and made slightly larger than the 9 16 That's because we're going to have to come back and we're going to have to actually ream it out a little to get our blocks to fit up in there. We're going to be using this as an access hole to feed in our hardware. Now you can either do this next step with a file bit like I have, a hand file, or you could even get up there with a rotary tool. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to enlarge this on either side so I have enough room to fit my spacer block through. Once I've got enough room to pass my block through comfortably, I'll go ahead and repeat this on the other side. You can see our three holes drilled out over here and the one I enlarged as well. Now it's never a good idea to leave exposed metal underneath your vehicle. It can cause rust and corrosion. So I'm just going to take a little bit of clear spray paint. I'm going to go hit these, seal those up a little bit, prevent any rust and corrosion down the line. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Now we're going to go ahead and start fishing our hardware in. The larger hole we made is going to be our access hole. We'll take one of our fish wires that comes in the kit. I like to put a little bend in it. That's going to make it easier to get it out that access hole. When we feed it through, we can start pushing it back. And then reach up in there with your finger. It's a good idea to have gloves when you're doing this because you just cut, expose, you just expose some metal. So you don't want to cut yourself. Once we get it pulled through, you want to feed on your spacer block. And then you'll take your carriage bolt and that just threads into your fish wire. Take your spacer. This is why we had to enlarge it so we could get it up into the hole. Get it up there. And then we'll take our bolt. We'll get that up in there as well. Sometimes it's easier with the bolt head to go in head first. Once you get everything up in there, you give it a yank on the other side and it should just pop right out. For our rear hole on both sides, we'll use the reverse fish wire technique. You're going to want to have your fish wire already threaded onto your bolt. You push the head of your bolt up into the frame. Then follow it with the spacer block. Put that up in there. Give yourself some space to get the spacer block up in there as well and then just pull it back down. Go ahead and repeat this for the three holes on the other side. Once we've got all of our hardware in place, we're going to grab that second set of hands again and we're going to use the fish wires that we had left 
previously attached to our bolts and we're going to feed them down through the corresponding holes in our hitch. This is going to help us pull those bolts through so we can get our hardware on. We're going to go up over our exhaust on one side and after we finagle it in, just like before, we'll come up and get this side. Again, we'll just go up over our exhaust. That play that we have from having removed our exhaust hangers is really coming in handy here. When you lift it up, it should line up with those holes we previously marked out. We'll go ahead and pull our hardware down through. And all we really need to do right now is get one bolt in place that's going to help hold the hitch up so we can focus on the rest of our hardware. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the fish wire off of here. If I get my extra set of hands to hold the hitch up for me, what I can do is take my finger and apply a little side pressure to the bolt. That's going to help keep it in place. And once I get one started on each side, I can focus on the rest of the hardware, getting them hand tight. The hardware in place will come back with a 19 millimeter socket, get it all tightened down. Then we can come back with our torque wrench, make sure everything's torqued down to the specifications found in our instructions. On these rearmost bolts, you may need an extension to get up in there just because of this gusset here on the hitch. We just get them all torqued down, then we'll get our fascia reinstalled in the reverse order that we took it off. Before we get our fascia back installed though, we do want to put our exhaust hangers back in place. If you hit them with a little spray lubricant again, it's going to make it easier to get these back up into place. They should just push on once you lift it up. Don't forget to do this for all three. Then you can take down your strap that you had holding it up and we'll move on to that fascia. Get it lined up and it's going to click back into place and then we can get our fasteners reinstalled. Make sure when you're putting it back in place that you go above your receiver tube on your hitch. Just get that hardware back in place. With everything tightened, torqued, and our fascia back in place, that'll do it for our look at and our install of the Curt Class 3 trailer hitch on our 2020 BMW X1.